Hi, this is Denise Matthew and welcome to episode 32 of the Mandala of Life, 365 days to self-discovery. Today we're staying with collective energy, but we're moving from logical collective energy to abstract energy. Where logic is all about the details, theories, and hypotheses, abstract energy is about ideas, stimulation, and living experiences. This is the gate 56, the energy that transforms abstract energy into language. This is where the storyteller lives, a storyteller that talks about the human experience, where all your ideas are here to be shared and where the experiences of your life can be interwoven into stories so that others can benefit from what you've learned. This is about ideas that come and go, and as soon as they are spoken of, the process is complete. We're staying with the throat center, moving from the gate 62, a gate of communication, to the gate 56, which is another gate of communication. The gate 62 is the communication that comes from logic, from facts, where the gate 56 is concepts that we weave within stories to make it more interesting to our audiences. The ideas are always to be shared and never to be kept for ourselves. The experiences are usually experiences that we've actually had ourselves, which means they're about the past. And that's an important concept to remember when we talk about abstract energy in that it's experiences and it's always about the past. We're always looking at the rear view mirror at the things that actually already happened. Logic, on the other hand, is always looking to the future. But before we get into new content, let's quickly go over what we talked about in our last episode. In our last episode, we talked about the gate 62, which is a gate of communication and also called a metamorphic gate. This is also the gate called the gate of naming that gives names to the things in the Maya or the real world. It is half of the channel 1762 and talks about hypotheses or what we might call opinions and how we must get the facts and data in order for people to support our theories so that we can move to the next step, which is experimentation. There's potential for talent within this energy, but the talent comes from repetition, which means it's something that develops over time. The gate 62 sifts through all the opinions of the gate 17, and when it's selected the correct opinion or hypotheses, it collects the details or the data to support it. This is the energy of somebody who could be a good teacher or even a researcher because it requires a lot of repetition and doing the same thing over and again until eventually you get what you want, a solid theory that is ready for the next step. And if you want to find out more about the Gate 62, please check out episode 31 of the Mandala of Life. With that said, let's get into the Gate 56. And please don't forget to check out the other episodes of the Mandala of Life. There are all kinds of different teachers that we have in our world. Some teachers teach with logic, patterns, they teach science, and ways that we can predict the future. There's always going to be hard data and facts with that type of teaching. And then there's other teachers. These teachers are the ones that talk about concepts and ideas. They talk about experience and sometimes even history. But the key thing is that most times they're talking about stories that have happened in the past. The gate 56 is also called the gate of stimulation, which means that the whole purpose of this energy is to find something that will stimulate people into listening to what you have to say. Without a willing audience, then a storyteller doesn't have anybody to tell a story to. And that's what's important about this energy, to be engaging and to entice people into listening to what you have to say. There are no facts within this energy. It's only ideas and concepts that are transitory by their nature, which means they come and go. But the one thing that the stories have in common is there's some level of experience that is interwoven within the story so that people are learning about the experiences that happened in the past. We need to know experiences of the past because that's how we evolve as a civilization. That is the nature of experiential energy. This is the 14th gate of the quarter of civilization. The gate 56 is half of the channel 1156, which is called the channel of curiosity. Ra Uruhu said that if eyes could talk, this would be the energy that would actually do it, which means that this is the energy that talks about what we've seen. So for instance, this is considered to be the left eye or what the left eye sees. This is projected energy, which means that in order for people to accept or want to hear what we have to say, it needs to be invited out of us. And that holds true for all energy that is considered projected. And it doesn't matter what type you are, you still need to be acknowledged or invited into the energy before you share your stories. Otherwise, you'll probably be shut down or people won't listen to you. When you have the full channel, the 1156, it's within you to want to tell stories. And when people don't want to listen to your stories, then it can become very painful. And there can be a longing to actually just speak and talk about what you want to talk about. 
But when you're given the opportunity to tell the stories that you want to tell, then that's when we can truly find magic and a willing audience that will listen to every word you say. There's no need for facts or anything that has to be proven within this energy. It's really just about the story, an engaging story, a story that stimulates, that makes people feel something or see something as you've seen it within yourself. There can be a moral within the story, or it could be just a story that's giving an idea or a concept that you want to explain to people, but instead of just saying one sentence or a logical way of just giving facts and details, you dress it up and make it more beautiful. This is the type of energy that works better together. So in other words, if you have a hanging gate 11 or a hanging gate 56, you may feel as if you're missing a certain part of yourself, but when they come together, then you can have the energy to do what you want to do. Because without the 56, the 11 doesn't have a way to verbalize or speak the energy or to talk about their ideas. And without the gate 11, the gate 56 may not have the ideas to actually talk about. And as I said, just like all projected energy, there's always some need to have an acknowledgement or an invitation, which means that manifestors have to ask if they can share a story. Projectors need to be invited into sharing a story and generator types can respond to telling their stories while reflectors can share their stories with their community. But since this is about the gate 56, let's talk about a hanging gate 56. The gate 56 says, I believe or I don't believe, which brings home the idea that here we don't have anything that we have to prove. We just have to tell a nice engaging story that people are interested in listening to. It really is about experiences of life and how we can weave them within a story. But because we know that it's half of the channel 1156, it means that we can have beliefs within it because it is connected to the Ajna. In other words, you can sometimes start to believe that your ideas and concepts are more than they actually are. Because we know that there is nothing within an idea that has been proven. It's just a concept that you have within you, but it's a concept that can come and go based on the surroundings or based on how life is going in the moment. And yet there's always potential for people to get hooked into this concept of believing that their ideas have a lot more weight and reality than they actually do. And it's important to keep in mind that the whole point of this energy is really just to talk about the idea or to deliver the story. And after that's done, there's nothing more to do. When you carry this energy, you may have a gift for metaphors, which can make connections for people to understand about ideas or concepts in a way that it's easier to digest. It can also be a way of stimulating people to actually think of things in a different way, to talk about a concept or an idea so that they can open up their awareness to something different that they can see for themselves. It can be the energy of somebody who's an inspirational speaker, who through their words can create an opening so that other people can carve their own paths in their life and to see their life and experiences through different eyes. While this energy of the gate 56 is meant to share with others and to tell stories to other people, and once you've told your story, the energy is completed and you've done what you're meant to do, sometimes we can turn it in on our own selves and we want to be stimulated. We want to find something and to have a constant hunger to have some experiences or to not be bored because life can be boring if you don't have something new always happening. So it becomes a hunger and an expectation that you're always going to find something that will stimulate you. There can be a need for having experiences, but not necessarily being able to make them happen. And that's where we can find pain within this energy and a need to find stimulation in all the things in life through food, through experiences, through parties, through anything that activates our senses. And yet you can never feel full from the experiences that you get and you always want more. That's why this energy is also called the energy of the wanderer, always wandering through life, looking for something new, something exciting and something to stimulate you. The other way this energy can work is not allowing people to ask for your input or giving you an opportunity to talk about the things you want to talk about or the stories you want to tell. And if you're blurting out all the stories you want to tell and nobody's interested in listening, then that's when pain can come as well. The key with this energy is to always know that when you're asked and invited to share the stories that only you can tell, you will have a captivated audience that you never would have had before. To truly have people immersed in the story that you're telling is the greatest gift that you can receive. But it's a gift that you'll only receive when you know that when the timing is right, you'll be asked and invited into sharing your story with the collective. And if we look at the world around us and see people who express this energy or carry the energy of the storyteller or the gate 56, we can see people like Maya Angelou, who used her experiences of life and living as guideposts for how we ourselves can live a better life. Her writing, her poems, and the words she spoke 
have definitely given the world a lot of food for thought. When you step over my door sill, you've been raised. You know the difference between right and wrong. Do right. Don't let anybody raise you and make you change. And remember this, you can always come home. I went home every time life slammed me down and made me call it uncle. I went home with my baby. Wayne Dyer, inspirational writer and speaker, talked about the idea that when we started to look at things differently, there was potential to see more opportunities that we had available to us that we never would have seen if we hadn't opened up to seeing something different. And finally, YouTuber Jonah Jinton, who is someone who vlogs her life and shows the hardships and also the beauty of her life in Sweden. Through her videos and also her words, we get a little insight into exactly what she sees and the experiences that most people will never have. And when we learn that there is beauty within our stories and that by sharing our concepts, ideas and beliefs and know that our stories don't need to be anything more than beautiful stories, something to entertain, and sometimes something to teach, a way to weave the experiences that we've had in our lives into something that we can share with the collective. And that when we wait and have the patience to understand that when the timing is right, our aura will say that we are ready to tell our story. And when that happens, we can have a captive audience where people will engage and listen to our stories. And they may be inspired, stimulated, or they may even look at the world with different eyes. And when your story is told, the mandala of life turns again, and we hear from the voice of influence. This is a voice that says, I lead, and is a gate of manifesting influence. This is a gate 31, the gate of influence, and is a natural expression of leadership. Well, that's all for now, and I'll be back again next week with episode 33, the gate 31, the gate of influence. Until then, take care, and I'll see you again soon.